morning, Mick. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm um, today. I'm speaking with Chief Inspector Mick Rolf of North Yorkshire, Yorkshire Police. Um, we're going to be having a chat about exercise rotundity, which took place in January this year. Uh, exercise rotundity was a multi-agency exercise testing the joint responses of the emergency services to a series of terrorist incidents. So, really fascinating subject. But before we get into kind of the exercise itself, we thought it'd be nice to find out a little bit more about Mick himself and his journey in policing. Um, so Mick, over to you, tell us a bit more about yourself. Well, I've been in, uh, in policing 20 years. I've done a uh, majority of my service in the Yorkshire region. I joined Umberside Police um, back in 2002 uh, and then transferred to North Yorkshire Police later on. My service has really been involved in what we call specialist operations units. So firearms, specialist search, roads policing, road crime units, really. So I've kind of, um, you know, kind of my career has been in that, in that kind of niche area of police business. Um, I've worked uh, in a number of locations uh, across North Yorkshire. It's a very big county uh, within Umberside, uh, across West and South Yorkshire as well in a regional unit that I worked in for, for a number of years. Uh, and more latterly, I've come back to North Yorkshire um, and currently work in the staff office there, um, supporting the Chief Constable. And um, it sounds like you've had quite a varied career, certainly geographically as, uh, and in terms of the spread of operations. What has been your kind of highlights to date? I think if I look back across the 20 years, my, you know, the things that stand out as highlights to me, the most fun times, the most rewarding, uh, where I felt I was doing the, uh, kind of the the work that had the highest impact was on a regional road crime unit. Uh, so that unit supported kind of um, level two and three um, covert policing operations, which, you know, to translate that, it's basically surveilling people and taking out large quantities of drugs when people import drugs into the country, um, being involved in that. And that kind of level of criminality across all organised crime uh, within the country, really. So... I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, it took me all over the country. Uh, it opened some doors to work uh, with the Dutch police uh, and I set up, helped them set up their road crime unit in Amsterdam. So that took me across to the uh, continent quite a bit um, and we did kind of exchange visits. Um, so really that kind of area, that road crime area that I worked in both regionally uh, with the Dutch police setting up their unit and then locally with North Yorkshire um, as one of the founder members of the North Yorkshire teams, um, was a, an extremely rewarding part of my career. I loved every minute of it, and it felt like a, what what a cop should be to me—a traditional police officer. You come to work every day, and you, you brief every day. He's very loosely uh, getting a fast car and go and catch bad guys. And I know that's kind of slang terminology, but that's what it's about for me. Is coming in and. and catching bad people and making sure that they're held to account. So, and that unit was the only unit that have, that's allowed me to do that in that way. So I love those years. They were fantastic. Oh, that sounds amazing. And I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, when it, when kids grow up and they think, oh, I want to be a police officer, they're not thinking, oh, I want to sit behind a desk and fill in forms. They are thinking, I want to jump in a car and I want to go out and I want to catch bad guys. And so the fact that you've had an opportunity to do that for part of your career is, is literally a childhood dream, I think. That's that's fantastic. And um, when you were traveling, um, kind of, you talked about helping um, the Dutch police set up their uh, unit. Um, did you bring anything back with you in terms of their practices or uh, their ways of working? Was it kind of re reciprocal in terms of learning? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think policing is policing wherever you go, whatever language people speak. Speak. You, you generally find that um, you run up against the same issues, same you know internal cultural challenges, if you like, uh, and now people knit together as policing organisations. So it actually felt once once we overcome like kind of language barriers. Uh, it felt very, uh, very much like what I was used to. So we were able to bring some best practice back from there. So the idea was uh, we helped them set up a road crime unit, but they had probably at that time, they were resourced in a much better way from a from an AMPR perspective. And we could bring some of that back and, and use that locally. Um, some of the crime trends that happen in Europe, you know, come across to the UK. So one of the things at the time that the Dutch teams were leading on was hidden compartments within vehicles. 
um, which is the stuff of James Bond films, really. You know, you press buttons inside a car and, and hidden compartments reveal, uh, you know, cash or drugs or other commodity. Uh, and they were leading on it. They were doing some great work on it. And again, we were able to bring that back, back, back to the UK because those vehicles do come across to the UK from the continent. Uh, and, the, and that organized criminality comes with it. So, um, yeah, we absolutely shared best practice in lots and lots of areas. Uh, and I had a great time doing it. It's um, I got paid to to do a job that I absolutely loved. And I love talking about the job. So teaching other people to do it from kind of grassroots level was just a dream, really. I feel very lucky. Amazing. Very Amazing. Oh, it's it's really heartening to hear such a positive, um, uh, you've such a positive journey. Um, so along that time, obviously, twenty years, mass, you know, kind of uh, massive amount of time passed. What are the significant changes that you've seen in policing over that time? What are the things that you really look at today and think, "Wow, we're a world away from where we were when I started." I think. Um... There are real parallels to, to policing now to when I started, but there are differences as well, which you kind of allude to. So when I joined, um, it felt very different to how it feels now. It felt uh, more heavily resourced. I joined a police station of, you know, 20 odd people on a shift, and lots of supervision around me. It felt like you had lots of colleagues and you were you were a big team and you, and you felt like you had the finances and backing to be able to go out and do what you needed to do as an organization. Uh, at that point when I joined, there was a real focus on what we call serious acquisitive crime. So your traditional crime types, burglary, robbery, theft, those things that affect the community um, at that kind of volume crime level were, were priorities, really. And since that time, it's we've seen reductions in budgets and numbers uh, and a large swathe of the organisation is kind of left at the top end. So lots of our experience is kind of left through retirement and, and early redundancy packages, which has meant that we've got a much younger workforce uh, and crime types have shifted to, to more technical types of crime. Now, you, you organise criminality now rather than going out on the street uh, to try and commit a robbery and, and uh, or high-value robbery. We'll sit in a room with a lot of computers and do that kind of more lucrative work in that way. So crime types have shifted uh, and the workforce is is kind of very different to what it was when I joined. But there's huge positives in that as well. Um, that younger workforce has a much better grasp on technology. He's born with it, grows up with it. Um, a lot of cops I joined with, uh, you know, now have, have long since retired. Uh, and I've look, looked around and thought, oh, I've suddenly kind of a long in service cop. And I was always the young lad on the shift. So um, all these cops that are joining now don't know what it is to lick a postage stamp. So uh, and that's a positive thing because they need that kind of that grounding and that that acceptance and that kind of understanding the technology at that level to to basically progress and and enforce it so it has changed uh very much so but it's had to change and that is the best thing about policing for me um in 20 years it's always changing and always evolving and it has to it has to be responsive to community needs and i love that what a great place to be and a great place to work because nothing ever check nothing ever stays the same things don't stagnate and you're always moving always developing so it's great really amazing i don't suppose you've ever had two days that are exactly the same in your career no and that that's an absolute gift for me no two days have ever been the same um there's so much opportunity there's so many ways in which you can diversify as an officer I have, people will look at me and say, I remember Mick Roth when he joined and when he was running around in a fast car, I know he was, and I've changed and evolved. And now I'm here with a white shirt on, uh, leading people in this way. So um, you've got a real opportunity to diversify and take your career where you want it to go. It's, it's I mean, I love the job. I do it for free at times. So um, yeah, I love it. Mick, thank you so much. That was such a insightful and um, interesting kind of starter into your career and how you where you got to, to today and where you got to leading Operation Obtundity. Um, so I think we'll uh, pause there and then uh, in our next part, we'll pick up and we'll talk more about Operation Obtundity. <laughs>